He's our hope. We stand, O oh Lord, to say thank you, Jesus, for the grace that you have bestowed upon us. He's your hope. He's the prince of your peace. He's everything we would ever desire. Glory to your name, O oh Lord God. Wherever you are, just wave your hands to God. Just worship Him. He's awesome. Glory to your name, my God. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. Come on, come on, come on, come on. What a mighty God we serve. Come on. Hallelujah. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. Even in the midst, in the midst of trouble, He's our peace. When many shall be declaring there is a casting down, we shall lift up our hands up to the Lord Almighty, for He is our God. We are the children of His passion. Glory to your name. I worship you. Holy Spirit Father Lord I declare let every foundation that is not of you shake and shake off in the name of Jesus whatsoever oh Lord that has not come to give you praise and give you glory Lord, I stand upon this altar today and I decree, let that foundation be shaken and be taken off. In the name of Jesus, whatsoever in our lives, O oh Lord, this morning, that would not give you praise, whatsoever, O oh Lord, whatsoever, Lord, I curse it out of our lives. In the name of Jesus, somebody wave those hands and just begin to thank the Lord thank the Lord thank the Lord for the authority thank the Lord for the power thank the Lord for the grace and ability that has been given to you thank God come on come on go ahead and thank God for the power thank God for for that for that unction to function in the name of Jesus Lord we decree Lord this environment be soaked with the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus, Lord, I decree this hour, let your glory take over. Yeshua, Lord, we give you praise. Give you all glory. Hey, in a no shata da balevo, shata da bale, si da da balagade. In a na mo shata na bale de mo shata na de. Whoa, we give you praise, Jesus. And Oh, Lord, we give you all the praise. Blessed be your name. Ah, Tanabalo Shatanamo. Yeshua HaMashiach Give you praise We praise you O oh Lord As you up suppress our enemies When our praises go up Our blessings are, are released As we lift up worship O oh Lord I decree O oh Lord Jehovah That every power that has been risen against us Bow before us
no other name no other name given amongst men that anyone should be saved but the name of Jesus for the name of the Lord is a strong tower he said the righteous they run into it and they say preservation is coming your way this day that amen is not coming like you believe it may the Lord preserve your going out and your coming in may the Lord preserve you all round in the name of Jesus Lord, we give you thanks for the end of the month of May. In the name of Jesus, you've been so good to us. Hallelujah. You've been so magnificent to us. You've been awesome, oh God. You are the awesome God. You preserved our going out and our coming in all through this month. Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, oh Lord. For many have gone out, oh Lord, but they didn't come back. Many slept, but they didn't wake up. Here we are, healthy and hearty. It is not of him that will it. It's not of him that run it. But it's of him that showed mercy. We are here today not because we are so righteous. Not because we are so smart, but because God has preserved us. In every situation you find yourself, I declare that may you be that scapegoat in the name of Jesus. Uh, if that word is for you, let that amen come like thunder. As you're watching right now from your house, I care not to know what's happening around you and around your neighborhood. But I decree under this mandate and under this unction and under this anointing that you and your household will escape. You shall escape in the name of Jesus. 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 Glory to your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Spirit. Are you ready this morning? <laughs> Amen. You may be seated. I want to give God praise for today. It's going to be an awesome day in the presence of God. I believe you have your writing materials. Like I will always say that the shortest pencil is better than the what? Good. I have good students in the house. Amen. <laughs> I hope you watching online too you remember that the shortest pencil is not better than the longest memory praise God is that correct no. wonderful good students <laughs> trying to shake you around so the shortest pencil is better than the longest memory whatever you write whatever thing you write down stays for so long for centuries to come memories do do die in the sense that as you are you have memories of things but the day you leave this planet earth there will be no ability to extract your memories and give to some other person praise god so you may have been memorizing stuffs putting them up here in your head remember the brain is like a flash drive a storage system where you store information 
but I want to encourage you to translate those information in your head and put them down in writing. Many of us, wherever you're connecting from, you, you, may, you may not know that you are a good writer until you put yourself to the test. Amen. Until you push yourself to that height and start putting something down. Praise God. Today, I'm going to be speaking on, today is the last series I've been talking about power. This May, we've been dealing on power. Praise God. Power. Somebody say power. Power, like I've always said to you, that it is a necessity, not a luxury. In the life of a believer, power is necessary. The Bible says right from the days of John the Baptist, it says the kingdom of heaven suffered violent. And it said only the violent ones take it by force. You cannot possess something forcefully without some element of power and authority. If you fail to possess, you will be dispossessed. What puts you at the top in life is because you continue possessing territories. When God sent the children of Israel as they keep going, they keep taking territories. The Bible says, We are so ever the soul of your foot shall trade upon. God has given it to you for your possession. You don't possess without power. Power is the attribute or the key that guarantees you access to possess things. Am I communicating with somebody? So you have to have that understanding as a believer that you have to grow from the level of wanting prayers to the level of becoming a prayer machine yourself. Am I talking to somebody? You have to move from the level of saying, oh, that brother, that sister is very powerful in the Lord. And to move from that level to say, we as believers, we are powerful in the Lord. Power is not given to certain people in the body of Christ. Power is given to everyone. The moment you, 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 you invite Jesus into your life, that very instant you are being translated, praise God. We're going to look at something in the book of John. John chapter 1 verse 12. John 1 verse 12. John 1 verse number 12 and it reads it says but as many as received him as many so God has so much power to go around to everybody amen yeah so as many as received him to them he gave what power dunamis to them he gave dunamis to become sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. To them he gave the ability and the power to be sons of God. So the first access of power that you receive is the access of you receiving Jesus Christ into your life. Praise God. Second Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3. going to be reading from verse 5 well, we're going to end it at verse number 7 if you're there say amen I want you to follow me carefully this today this afternoon this night 
this morning depending on where you're watching from now there is an epidemic in the body of christ there is a problem and it's a virus before i go into this scripture you know the bible said that my people god was speaking he said my people perish because of what lack of knowledge not because they lack christ not because they lack god not because they don't have access but they lack the knowledge to use what they have to get what they want my people perish so it is not the will of god for you to perish but you will be the determinant factor if you will perish or not the bible says, whatsoever you allow here on earth is allowed in heaven whatever you disallow here on earth is disallowed in heaven so the problem in the body of christ is that many don't believe that as a believer you can exhibit power many don't believe that as a believer you can you can you can ooze out some mysteries out of you how will christ be resident in you and you are still moving around like a like a like a beggarly element asking for who will pray for me this is the reason why false prophets have so much increase and are waxing strong in this end time is because number one in matthew 24 jesus prophesied it that they will come praise god so they are fulfilling prophecy so you can't pray them off those of you that are having you know you know you know the ministry of going to fight false prophets they are fulfilling the end time prophecy so you can't stop it you just have to pass through that season if you're a child of god now the reason why they are being energize more is because they are feeding on the ignorance of the believers if you know the scripture for yourself you will not face destruction and no man can deceive you church halotry has increased in this later time when god wants to rebuke the children of israel about going to worship idols he attributes them to be like harlots unfaithfulness what are you looking for the problem is that you are actually pursuing what you should not pursue now you're pursuing it now to get what you should not be getting now praise god one thing is needful run after god the bible says seek first ye the kingdom of god and his righteousness and he said every when you have sought him after you have finished seeking him in the midst of seeking him he said every other thing shall be added meaning you don't need to pray about certain things you should just have them knowledge when you lack understanding, I say, I don't care who you are, you may be a bishop, a pastor, a title without entitlement makes you nothing. I don't care how many years you've been a believer. It is not by how many years. It's by the knowledge you've been able to acquire over the few times you've been in Christ. And how do you get knowledge? How do you know? You cannot know without giving interest or showing interest on a thing. The reason why many of us will go to school and we come out with flying colors is because we gave it attention. Give this thing you are doing attention if you want to produce results. after today you will receive power to take over Amen. 
in the name of Jesus you will receive power to take over seek to know God Paul after all the years he has you know you know enjoy the mysteries of Christ yet Paul still humbled himself to pray and say that I may know him and the power behind the resurrection my God even Paul at that level at that height was still seeking God to know more was still seeking after Christ that I may know him and the power behind the resurrection there is a power behind the resurrection when Jesus came to Mary and Martha and when Lazarus was there he told them he said I, I am you see listen the resurrection you are praying for I am that resurrection and when he spoke about it Mary said oh I understand that in the last day he would resurrect he said no today the, resur the, the resurrection because there is a difference between the resurrection and resurrection he is not resurrection. Jesus is not resurrection. He is the resurrection. So he is resurrection impersonified. One thing that turns my stomach so much is when I see faithless and powerless believers. When you, when, you, when you use scriptures and try to bring them to light and about what God can do and what God has been doing and what he can still do, they tell you and say, you know, those things happened back in the days. We don't serve a back in the days God. The Bible says he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he was able to do it yesterday, he is even capable to do more today. For the steadfastness of the Lord are renewed every morning. Can I talk to somebody? The other day, God was having some conversation with Moses. And when Moses asked him a question and said, If I go to Pharaoh and the children of Israel and the Jews, who will I tell them has sent me? And God was looking around to look at for something that is higher than him. He was checking under the table. He checked under his seat. He checked around. He asked the other angel, is there anything? They said, no. And he turned to Moses and said to him, go and tell them that I am that I am have sent you. Can I interpret that to you? What God was simply telling Moses is that any way you see me, I will, or you understand me, or you, or, you, or, you, or you believe me in such a way, I will manifest myself to you in that way. Any way you understand me, I will. If you see me as the God that provides, I will provide for you. If you see me as the God that heals, I will be your healer. If you see me as the God that resurrects, I will be their resurrection unto you. So the way you see me, the way you understand me, I will manifest myself in that form to you. When you, when you have that kind of experience, that, that was why Moses never doubted God in any form or shape. Even when Pharaoh was proving stubborn, Moses knew that Pharaoh will bow the long road. Word of God, wherever you are watching right now, online, that the era of playing Christianity is over I am glad to announce to you no more
because coronavirus has exposed the whole lot. You know, everything that has disadvantage has its own advantage too. Do you know that statistically it is proven now that most churches that are striving hard are not thriving because of their electronic connection or their financial capability. They are thriving because of the currency that can be used here on earth and that currency can also be used in heaven. You know that currency? Faith. Simple. By faith. By faith. Those that are that are that are that are that are in a limbo right now are those believers that even suspect God Himself. You know, there's a way people will suspect and they will suspect God. The Lord was speaking to the children of Israel. He said, be careful so you don't grieve the spirit. Attributing every miracle, every testimony to be of the devil. Those are the people that are confused now and they are in the limbo. Because over the time, they have denied the faith, but they are still in church. Over the time, they have rejected the access to power. Yet, they ask for prayers. So, how do you think prayer comes to pass if not through power? You cannot buy power in Walmart. Even in those generator producing companies that produce generators. They call it power what? Power line. You can't go there to tell that I want power. They will tell you they don't sell power, they only sell generator set. Are you there in 2 Timothy chapter 3? Verse 5. Verse 5 was talking about them. He said, having a form of godliness, which means they are like you and I in the church. As believers, they have a form. Give me the amplifier of this. They have a form of godliness. You call them brother. <laughs> you call them sister. You call them pastor. You even call them bishops. You call them evangelists. Man of God. Sister of God. Mother of God. Even father of God. Titus. Apostles. I've seen some that say they are major apostles. Minor apostles. If you ask me, me and me myself, I don't know the difference. Which one is major? <laughs> Which one is minor? <laughs> is, is it by rank? <laughs> one star apostle, two star bishop, five star. You see, God has children. No? Ah, God has children. Some will hide inside of their basement, take a big jar of oil because they are looking for power. They will pour the oil on them. Say, it's not by turning yourself into a fried plantain. <laughs> and when you ask them what is happening, you say, you know, man, I'm just pouring this oil upon myself, you know. So I'll receive some major power, you know. Ignorance. No matter how you drink the oil, Pour it on your head. It won't add anything if you lack the basic knowledge. It is the spirit that 
affect the unction. Your heart cannot be wrong with God and you still expect to ac have access to power. It will not work because your heart is wrong with God. Go and ask Elemas the sorcerer. He will tell you. Some believe that they can give their way into becoming powerful. You don't use gifts to attract power. If you bring your gift to me, I will take it. Hello? Is it not gift you call it? But if your purpose is to sow into my life because you want to, you want to get, have access to those things, that, that level where I am, I've not even attained yet. You're wanting to drag the little one I have. You won't get it. Oh, uh, yeah. When I, when I rub my body with the bishop, when I rub my body with him, I will be powerful. You don't get power through that way. Hello? Power does not come down. We are still in Africa, right? Look at these church believers. Because they are so-called believers. Holding a form of what? Outward godliness. They dress religion. Are you saying the word? Religion. The spirit of religion has held them bound. So they dress religiously. They tell you you have to cover your hair. You have to, you have to, you have to dress in a certain way. Because people that dress like that are those that the Holy Spirit go to, go to, go to sit down with. Who told you that? You have to wear you have to wear those long gowns you see those type of gowns that i call those kind of gowns keep the city clean you know why i call them keep the city clean because when you wear them you are moving is sweeping the city so the city needs not to get those trucks that clean the city because you're cleaning the city for them or you join those sisters that until they wear those frying pan they call what i don't know they call them hearts those big ones that can accommodate three persons if it's raining that's only when they feel holy oh mm, 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 mm. what is flogging you hello that's not that's not that's not a sign of power that oh hey when you finish, hey, you come back. <laughs> That's not a sign of power. One of, the, one of the biblical accounts that has really demonstrated what present day believers need to understand if you study the book of Acts. Because remember, that was when from chapter 1 to chapter 2 was just when the Holy Spirit was being introduced for the first time here on earth. So the walking and the activities of the apostles, if you are able to study it, don't study it with a critical uh, a mindset to criticize it. No, no. Study it asking the Holy Spirit to show himself through the scriptures. But that's the problem believers have. They study the Bible like it's newspaper, like it's daily times. No, the Bible is not your daily times. The Bible is the word of God. So when you approach it, don't approach it based on the knowledge you acquire from your school. How to read. Is that is, you reading doesn't mean that you have access with the Holy Spirit. Because I've seen men that are illiterate that can't speak good English. But they are endowed with the power of the Holy Spirit. So it's not based on your education or qualification or your, or, your, or, your, or your ability to be eloquent. No, it's not. It's not based on your geographical location or, or where you were born or where you come from. I've seen God pick men from the bush and make them president. I've seen God pick men from dungeon and make them great. I've seen God pick men from even the lowest part of the earth and make them great. 
So your geographical location has nothing to do with where God is taking you. The Bible said, holding to a form of outward godliness, religion in bracket, although they have denied its power, for their conduct nullifies their claim of faith. Ah, my God. Their conduct nullifies their claim of faith. And when Paul said this, the next thing that followed, Paul said, avoid such people and keep far away from them. You know why? They are contagious. Satan walks through them. Satan speaks through them. They are easily used to, to, to fulfill the desire of the devil. They don't, they don't thrive to grow spiritually. They believe that their spiritual soundness is based on how they appear every Sunday in church. You cannot say you are sanctified and your mouth is not yet sanctified. No. No. One part of your body cannot be sanctified and the other one is not sanctified. Praise God. You can say your hands are sanctified to give. But when it comes to your mouth, your mouth is as deadly as a viper. That you are just praying inside the church. And by the time the church is over, you are outside there. You want to take the bus and somebody, 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 somebody makes you angry. And you move the speed you will use to translate from Canadian English to Patois. Because you want to translate, you want to really convey your, 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 your most heart feelings. Praise God. You want to move in the rust them things. And by the time you are done, finishing the person, dissecting the person with your mouth, you now remember, oh, oh Lord Jesus, oh, oh my God, oh Lord, Lord. Lord Jesus, God help me. Oh Lord, this people won't make me sin and go to hell. Hello, you need to be born again. Give me verse 7. Verse number 7. Verse number 7. He said, always now, you see, they are always at church. They don't miss church. When you call for prayer meeting, they are there. When you call for any meetings at church, they will be there. They are always the first to come. Some of them are supervisors God kept in the church to supervise the pastor. Some of them are, are church managers. Like they made themselves church managers and watchmen. In, they are in every church, including this one. So don't think it that way. They are here too. But we use wisdom to deal with them. <laughs> Praise God. They are everywhere. There is no church. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. They are seen in every church. There are pillars and caterpillars. These two, for your church to be successful, you must have these two. The pillars are always building. The caterpillars are there trying to push down. And the, the caterpillars are reminding the pillars that they need to fortify themselves very well. Imagine a life where you have no enemy to remind you that you need to go on your knees to pray to God. What would your life be like? Some of us would have abandoned God and put him under our, our, our decks or wherever and be gone. So each time... You, have, you think you have an enemy. God is just reminding you that you still need to depend on him. <laughs> uh, Paul the other day said that a messenger of Satan was sent to buffet me. He said we would have come to you once and again, but Satan hindered us. Even at that level, Satan is still hindering Paul. 
So don't complain. Praise God. So always learning. They are always learning. They are in church paying attention. Always learning. Listening to anybody who will teach them but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You see that knowledge I'm talking about? They are not able to transpose themselves from the learning path to now becoming who God wants them to be. God help us. Five steps to get to power. Five steps need five steps to power five steps to power I'm going to run this very fast so media get me the scriptures off very fast five steps to power number one you ready if you want to be a powerful believer number one desperation Psalm 63 verse 1 to 2 desperation Desperation, Psalm 63, verse 1 to 2. Desperation. Say, Oh God, you are my God. With deepest longing, I will seek you. You see the desperation there? You have to be desperate to seek God. Am I communicating? Say, My soul, my life, my, my very self thirsts for you. My flesh longs and sighs. In a dry and weary land where there is no water. So you have to show that you really need this thing before you have access to it. Am I communicating? In verse, in verse number, in verse number, verse number, verse number four, verse number two, verse number two. So I have gazed upon you in the sanctuary to see your power and your what? Your glory. But first, you have to test. Verse 1 talks about the, the desperation. You see, you sing the song, I'm desperate for you. But the truth of the matter is that are you actually desperate for God? Lip serving. You are not. Do you, have you heard the word, come rain, come storm? Come rain, come shine. Right? You know what that means? Each time somebody makes that comment, the person is trying to commit themselves. No matter, the person is trying to tell you that no matter what, nothing will stop me. But I want to ask you, let me pose this way and stand this way and ask my question. I want to ask you, bro and sis, has something been stopping you? Or have you been stopping something? If it's snowing today and the road, they have given warning. Oh, don't go out. You will still go to work because you know that you must work, is it not? But immediately it comes to church. I have seen even some pastors we stop service that day and say, everybody stay in your house. Desperation. Why would such a church be a powerful church? You think God is, is somebody you can cajole into doing what you want? No. God, G-O-D, is a serious business. Serving God is a serious business. It's not a child's play. It's not what you do when you are comfortable. Because what I see in this part of the world is comfort service to God. Even right now, there are believers that are praying that this online service should still go on. Because they, are, they, want, they want to sit in their, in their, in their comfort zone with a cup of tea while the pastor is preaching they are throwing some peanuts in their mouth mm -hmm. yeah all right yes yes i believe i believe because they know they can't take coffee inside the church you're not desperate 
and tomorrow you see a man God is using you start accusing God God why is it that you choose Africans to use them oh why is it only Africans that command the power of God so much let me tell you something coming from a third world country I understand one thing for sure that sometimes what you call poverty makes people's brain to open when a child that has refused to get up and walk as every other child not like he or she has any issue with the leg just laziness is making it you know there are some children like that laziness is just holding them just take peanuts peanut keep this way keep the child this way and go inside the room they will crawl to the peanuts we are one is coming from determines how they reason with God you know in this part of the world you depend on the government in the third world countries they don't depend on no government so there's no you have to survive he's a survivor of the fittest and when you know that the only way for you to survive is to lift up your eyes up to the hills from where's coming your help your help coming from the lord which made the heavens and the earth that you wake up in the morning there is no food to eat and you prophesy to yourself and say father to i it's not like you're just lip servicing you're prophesying indeed i say father today as i go out i will not come back empty and you believe that word and god shows up for you that is what is called power not lip servicing not here when you try this way it doesn't work try this way it doesn't work you now think of ontario works ontario is working so ontario works you go and hide yourself under the government and even those that really needs the help will not see it because those that are complete and able to walk are not working so be desperate for god to see his power there has to be a desperation in your soul there has to be a desperation in your soul only the desperate are entitled to empowerment john chapter 7 verse 37 only the desperate only those that are desperate are those that are entitled to empowerment john chapter 7 verse 37 now on that last and most important day of the feast jesus stood and called out in a loud voice if anyone thirsts if anyone is tested let him come to me and drink are you desperate a man was 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 leprous in the bible and the prophet said to him go to that dirty river and bat yourself and you'll be made whole he said no are there no better rivers in the city why will you send me to this river because of my status you know people that always do like this before god do you know who i am are those that will never test the power of god pride hinders you from experiencing power because a prideful person if God gives that person access to power they will abuse it and I give God praise that power is not something that because your father is a pastor he will put his hand inside his pocket and bring power and give to you hello you have to work it with your knees yes if you can't walk it with your knees then be a regular teacher teach and go but if you need the move of the holy spirit your knees has to work it out you want to see the move of the holy spirit you want to see the move of power when people are sleeping you must be awake to pray when people when people are going out you're shutting yourself in you must do things in the opposite direction 
that the world is doing it for you to get an, an opposite result of, from what the world is getting. I repeat, for you to access power, you must do something opposite from what the world is doing so you can receive an opposite success or result from what the world is getting. It is only a fool that does the same thing, same, same way, repeatedly, that and now expect a different result. Am I communicating with somebody? Are you there in John? So, yeah, so you have to test. Open invitation, Jesus was crying out in John 7, 37. In John 15, verse 5, Jesus declared, said, without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. Praise God. I am the vine. You are the branches. The one who remains in me, the one who remains in me, mark that. I'm reading from the Amplified. The one who remains in me, I in him bears much fruit. Oh, my God. People are bearing fruit, but there are many that are not bearing much fruit. There is a big difference when you are harvesting a yam and you are harvesting something small this way. And when others are harvesting, they are harvesting something as big as this. They are not the same. Some pastors came in here to see me. And why they came in here, I was in the office. One asked me a question and said, You just started. What is it you are doing that we are not doing? And I said, I laughed and I looked at the three of them. I laughed. I said, what I am doing that you are not doing is simply that the time you are sleeping, I am up. It's simple. Jesus said, the time cometh when no man will walk. So my father is walking, hitherto also I walk. When you see ministry as a second class career, and you want to use it to compare to somebody that is the life spam of the person. Like if the person breathes in their breathing ministry, when they talk, they talk ministry. You can't, you can't, you can't match results. Praise God. He said, the one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. For otherwise, apart from me, that is cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. Anytime you see yourself struggling to fulfill your assignment via your own strength and God is not there, you will suffer because God is not in it. Whenever God is in it, Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6 said something. God was speaking there. He said, not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit, saith the Lord. When the Spirit is not mixed, the Spirit of God is not mixed into what you're doing, you will sound like a broken record. Praise God. If you're there, say amen. Number two sanctification number two steps to step into power sanctification Psalms 45 6 to 8 King James please Psalms 45 6 to 8 sanctification sanctification you see that sometimes God wants to introduce certain deep things 
to the children of Israel, he would tell Moses, he said, tell them to sanctify themselves. Tell them to cleanse themselves. Give me from the King James Version. Tell them to cleanse themselves. Tell them to separate themselves. If you are not living a life of separation, sometimes friends have called you. Oh, can we meet over here? And you look at it, you say, no. What would that meeting profit me than if I sit down and I hold my scriptures and read? I will feel more blessed. So you have to know how to prioritize things. Give me from the King James Version. You have to know how to amplify things and also prioritize things. Praise God. Psalms chapter 45, verse 6 to 8. It says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Verse 7. Thou lovest what? Righteousness. And hatest wickedness. Therefore God, thy God, hath anointed thee with what? The oil of gladness above thy what? So people can be anointed more than others. Why? Because they were able to hate wickedness. Can I tell you something? Any, I don't care the, any, the church where you're worshiping with. Praise God. Or whoever you are under. But I tell you, any day you rise up to fight against your pastor. You are only reminding God what Lucifer did to him in heaven. I'm sending this as a warning. If you, if you like, call yourself most evangelists. You are under a man of God. You are under your pastor and you say you pray and God talks to you and you are fighting him. You will soon learn the lesson in a big way. You think, you think, let me tell you, anything that goes close to rebelliousness, the spirit of rebellion, God does not tolerate it. Are you there? He said, because thou lovest righteousness, I hated wickedness. Praise God. Give me verse 8. Now, this is how it looks like. Give me verse 8. Verse 8, verse 8. All thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia out of the ivory places whereby they have made thee glad when a man's righteousness gladdens the heart of the Lord. That's how his garment appears. So until you enter into a level of sanctification, you may not see that level of power you're expecting. Your desire for empowerment demands practical sanctification. Your desire for empowerment demands practical sanctification. In Luke chapter 5, verse 38, praise God, Jesus was talking about the new wine and the old wine. Luke chapter 5, verse 38. Luke 5, verse 38. Jesus was talking about the new wine and the old wine. He said, but he said, but new wine must be put into new bottles and boats are what? Preserved. Praise God. Boats are preserved. You must put a new wine in a new wine skin so you'll be able to preserve both the wine and the skin. God will not put a new wine into an old man. Hello? God will not release his spirit into an old man. You know who an old man is? Your old self. You are repented. You say you are born again, but nothing was born again inside of your life. You just moved your apartment from 1965. You move it into 2021. Nothing has changed. Your mouth is still the same. The way you cross people, you are still cursing. The way you do things, you're still doing. Nothing has changed. And you want God again, on top of all those anointing you have, to now anoint you again with power. Ah, then you will kill people. Yes. 
So take off the old man so the new man will come. Am I communicating? New wine is the preserve of new men. Until you flow in the atmosphere of a new man, you cannot enjoy or experience a new wine. It takes a new man to be entitled for the new wine. Luke chapter 5 verse 38, we've read that. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 23. Proverbs 1 23. Proverbs 1 23. Until you turn, it is not your turn to experience a turnaround. Proverbs 1 23. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit upon you. I will make known my words unto you. Which means God will speak to you. You will hear him. But the first thing he needs you to do is to turn at his rebuke. Turn at his reproof. When you are rebuked, don't see it as an insult. Anybody that sees rebuke as an insult is not qualified to experience or to flow in power. Because power is only given to servants. Power is only released to servants. Those that serve, those, those are the people that are empowered to reign. Am I communicating with somebody? Even when David was anointed as king, did David take the throne immediately? No. God made a provision for him to go and serve on that disobedient soul. Hello. Learn from these things. God made a room for David that he, God, has anointed to be the next king, not to go and take the throne immediately. Sometimes you need to sit down and learn. I was talking to some folks that came to my house one of those days and made, and made a mess. And I said to them, I said, if your former pastor had done very well, I won't be having a headache. Because I tell you, people need to sit down and learn. Ministry, as a believer, you, it's not just like your regular education. Learning process is very painful. You don't learn comfortably. David was anointed king in the midst of who? His brethren, his family brothers, not even in the midst of the whole of Israelites. The only stranger in the house that day was prophet Samuel, which was the prophet that came to anoint him. And after then, Read the scripture. The Bible says he returned back to the wilderness. Bush, bush, forest. So pastor, he went there to pray. No! He went there to continue what he was doing before. To tend to the sheep as a shepherd boy. Not a king boy. That's why I look at people that don't want to serve but they want to reign watch them mark them if you're a pastor mark people in your church that they hate to serve but they always enjoy position authority mark them it's a luciferian spirit So until you turn, it is not your turn to experience a turnaround. For you to experience a turnaround, you have to turn around your heart. You have to be a changed person for you to experience that turnaround. If you're with me, say amen. In the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Acts 3, verse 19. Acts 3 verse 19 God be praised Acts chapter 3 verse number 19 Thank you Holy Spirit If you're there say Amen, amen. Acts 
He said, Repent ye therefore and be what converted, that your sins be what plotted out when the time of refreshing, because there is always a time of refreshing, when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So don't keep your old self and expect refreshing to come to you. You have to turn around and drop your old man so that when the Lord will refresh you, the refreshing will have effect in your life. When a man of God lines up seven persons and lays hands on them, receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Is he everybody that, that receives it? Haven't you bothered to ask yourself a question? What's happening? Is God partial? Is their heart? <laughs> the Bible said, for man looks at the outward appearance. God was rebuking prophet Samuel. I don't, I don't look or see the way you see. You look at the outward appearance. This person looks like a believer. Looks. Looks. But God looks at the hearts of men. It is not about what the person is doing today. It's what they are capable of doing tomorrow. So be careful. Number three, revelation. Number three, step to power. Revelation. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Number three, step to power. Revelation. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is revelation that makes you to be bold. Am I communicating with somebody? For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Praise God. So, 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 so it is, it is, it is revelation that brings you to this height where you tell yourself, say, I am not ashamed to be called a believer. You know why? Because you now have revelation of who you are. You now have understanding of who you are. In the book of Luke chapter 5 verse 17, when you have understanding based on Romans 1.16, then Luke chapter 5 verse 17 will make more sense to you. Luke 5 verse 17, and it came to pass on a certain, certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. To heal who? Doctors. You know, the Pharisees are very stubborn. They are, they are keepers of the scriptures. Like they know the scripture back to front. So, if as a pastor, you can't come and tell a Pharisee and say this one. That, no, no, no. They quote it offhand. They scribe. Are caught that they, are, they are deep followers of what the scripture says. But you know something? You could know the scriptures. You could follow the scriptures via head. Know it via head. Follow it via head. But you are not following it in your heart. It won't produce. That's why many believers are wallowing in confusion in the church. They are in the church. Nothing is happening. But that brother that came to church two months ago, God is blessing him. Heart, 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 heart. For God seeth the heart of every man. He knoweth the intentions and the intents of men. Your heart tells it, tells it all. Everything, whatsoever, your heart. The power of God was present to him. 
Acts chapter 10 verse 44. While Peter yet speak, the power of the Holy Ghost fell on them. While Peter yet speak, the power of the Holy Ghost fell on them. While Peter yet speak, the power of the Holy Ghost fell on them. The word you speak cannot be powerful until your spirit man is translated by God. Jesus said it's not what goes into a man that defies the man, but what comes out of the man. So if your, if your spirit, if inside of you is porous, if inside of you is, dis, is, is destroyed, what you will speak out of your mouth is to destruction like somebody that has so much hate inside of them they can't give love because what you have is what you give for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speak it somebody say i hear you proverbs 26 verse 28 Proverbs 26 verse 28 The Holy Spirit is the fire and the word of God is the wood. Oh, praise God. Proverbs 26 verse 20 verse 28 Praise God. Verse 20, just verse 20. I will show you where A is. <laughs> praise God. Okay. Watch this. So you understand where A is. I know many believers don't know. Where no wood is, there are there the fire goeth out. That is A. So we are not taking the next one down. So where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. What is the wood? The wood is the word of God. And the fire is the Holy Spirit. So it says, where no wood is, where there is no word of God, very soon the fire of the Holy Spirit will die out it will just die off it will go because it is the word that energizes the spirit is somebody with me are you there what number are we now number four number four supplication supplication Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 supplication supplication Philippians 4 verse 6 follow me very fast supplication Philippians 4 verse 6 you must live a life of supplication if you want to see power be a prayer person power is not given power is earned there is a depth you go with God the more you go God doesn't even give you power it is an access. Hello? You know, when somebody takes a very good cologne, sprays on themselves, and you go and hug that person, what will happen to your body? That's what power is. The more you hug God, the more you, the more you smell like God. Is God powerful? Does God exhibit authority? Then the more you hug him, the, that's just the easiest way I can explain it to you. The more you hug God, the more you look, smell, talk, act, exhibit power like God. So don't get it twisted when you get so close to God and you start exhibiting some characteristics of God's divine authority such that he told Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden to have dominion. So when you start exhibiting dominion, some will misunderstand you and start calling it arrogance. Don't listen to them. Continue what you're doing. Praise God. Just continue what you're doing. Don't listen to them. It is the nature of God in you that they are interpreting because they have not the Holy Spirit. Because anyone that has the Holy Spirit will desire what you have. They will say, Lord, if you have raised this man to be this, I desire to be as this man. Not to criticize. Because I've told you here before, I said, what you criticize, you will never become. 
when you see a rich man you're criticizing rich people you will never be rich when you see a believer that is doing very well you're criticizing that believer because out of jealousy you will never get to the height of that believer because you have shown that you hate what you're seeing so what you hate will never come to you he said be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God some of us we are very lazy when it comes to thanking God just to tell God thank you it's a big problem you came out in the open and you requested for prayers and the man of God prayed for you and God answered the prayers you go in the secret God thank you hmm that thing worked so fast you and God and you come out and you even pretend to the brethren like God has not answered your prayers and when they finally find that they ask you oh why did you testify he said you know <laughs> you scratch your head like this or you hit it if you're a woman he say you know or you use you use a pen I start choking it he say you, <laughs> you know it's very difficult to come out there to stand to talk uh, but when it was time to receive it it wasn't difficult continue praise God so you have to learn to pray that's why the Bible says, be careful don't bother yourself about anything but put yourself in the place of prayer and when you pray the Bible say supplication with thanksgiving learn to tell God thank you a thankful heart is a grateful heart when you tell and learn to say thank you to God God will fill your tank and your tank will never be empty show me a believer that doesn't give thanks show me somebody that from year to year God is blessing them and they are attributing it to their hard work I was talking to somebody and said wow God has really been faithful to you and she said, oh, that bishop, you know, I've been working very hard. And I looked at her like this. I said, ah. What? In my heart, I was just saying, what if two of your hands are cut off and your two legs are off? I believe your company, they, by the time they send you to the hospital, which you will pay your bill yourself, they will send you a letter and say, due to the current situation, they will call it current situation. <laughs> We can't have you again as a staff. We wish you well in your next experience to be employed with what hand and what leg. But the God that made it possible for you to have your two hands, for you to have your two legs, to give him five minutes of thanksgiving every morning is a big deal to you. You need to check your Christianity you are you are very far from God we are too busy for God very selfish believers of this generation my God very selfish people to, they are very selfish to God though. there are God showed me something one day there is a lady God showed me who that person is maybe that person is watching now I was praying I was not praying about and I was just praying and praying for all the members of the church when I got to her the Lord showed me a list she has like a record everything she's giving to church she's recording it and when I came out of that trance I said the Lord said this is how her heart is and that's why her blessing has been held you know it's not everything we see up there we come down we start talking you just have to and pray for her that God help her I you know 
200 dollars date 50 dollars date pastor's appreciation day this one date so that any day they will make me angry i will show them come and see ungratefulness i asked someone one day i said if god should ask you to pay for the oxygen you are using with your big nose your nose that is so big like you're drawing the whole oxygen here if god should tell you to pay for like your nose is big like my own praise god if god tells you to pay for the oxygen you are dragging how much do you have to pay you know how much oxygen you drag and how much carbon you release out like a exhaust pipe of a car you know how much you're polluting the earth let so so you know and you should be charged you should be charged some kind of fee for pollution if god start charging you and i for air pollution you move around you move around you you do you do you do things even along the road you 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 do air pollution god is not worried god still loves you but the little you do for the lord you're counting it one somebody even had the impetus to 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 tell me you do you know how far i have helped the church ha huh. and you want power to become you want power to ascend to the top you better you better check yourself again before you're asking for that power. no wonder god is not answering many believers now no wonder you tell people go and pray they come back and tell you i didn't see anything i didn't hear anything <laughs> you, you like seriously and you tell some go and pray and when they go and pray they come back to you and tell you bishop this is what i saw this is what the lord revealed to me and i heard the lord say to me i am so glad when i get those kind of replies you know why because i know that those people are not sleeping in the realm of the spirit if god opens your eyes to see the spiritual state of some of us my god some of us are operating we are surviving on oxygen in the realm of the spirit there is a pipe connected to our nose we're just surviving we're plugged into a machine Zechariah chapter 10 verse 1 supplication Zechariah 10 verse 1 ask the Lord rain ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain so the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to everyone grass in the field praise God everyone grass in the field ask the Lord you have to learn to ask so you can receive and when you ask ask in faith the book of James said not in wavering for he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea tossed up and down he said let not that man ever believe that he can receive anything of the Lord lastly Number five, the praise price. The praise price. This is what services the power system. The praise price is what services the power system inside of you. You must learn to praise God if you must see his power come down. Am I talking to somebody? You know one mystery i want to show to you is this each time you pray like you're praying god discharges angels for your sake but when you praise him he god leaves his throne and come down for you 
The Bible says, for the Lord inhabits the praise of his people. So you must learn to praise God. Every great man of God that operates in the power of the Holy Spirit is a good worshiper and a good praise singer. Because at the time when you praise God, even God said it. He said, he said, he said, he said to the children of Israel, he said, for the walls of Jericho to come down, you must do something abnormal. Go round about it seven times. At the seventh time, blow the trumpet and shout. When you shout, you roar like a lion. Because when the shout of the king is in your midst, you operate with power. And I pray today that grace will be released upon you. For number five, write down the scripture so you can read it at home. Psalms 92 from verse 1 to 10. Psalm 92 from 1 to 10. Let's just see verse 1. Psalm 92 verse number one Psalm 92 verse number one it is a good thing to give thanks not bad thing it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name O most high so it's a good thing if you develop the habit I don't mean play songs in your house and you start dancing to the cities no you have to generate praise by yourself inside of you it is powerful when you sing praise sometimes in my house i will just burst into praise and be dancing am i communicating and that period things will happen things will happen you got to learn to praise god when you praise god he oppresses your enemies Rise up to your feet wherever you are. Grace for mighty abundance. Lift up your voice and begin to worship the name of the Lord. Glorify his name. God is good. This is my desire, O Lord, to honor you, O Lord. Father, Lord, I pray that as I exhibit your power in the name of Jesus, may I honor you, O Lord, as I exhibit your power. Prophesy over yourself in the name of Jesus. I step into supernatural from today. Lord, I give you my heart. Give you my soul. Give you my soul. I live for you alone.
I pray, O oh Lord, that let this word terminate seeds in the lives of your people. I pray for everyone, O oh Lord, right now, that your grace be upon everyone. That let the supernatural hand of your great touch come upon your people. Lord, I pray for power to be displayed in the life of your people. Let every soul under the influence of my voice right now begin to thirst for you. Begin to desire your manifold grace and mercy. And we give you all the praise. What a mighty God we serve. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. Somebody say, believe in amen. Hallelujah. Jump those hands together to the Lord, God Almighty. Amen. Hallelujah.